these mountains and there's a lot of turbulence. Whoa! Heading to the Carpathian Mountains, Central Romania, and it's reckoned to be the last great wilderness in Europe. only a tiny weather window. The pilot says he can't land up there. So it means, it means I've got it from behind. This whole landscape is just wild. Full of these huge, deep gorges and these hidden forest ravines. The ancient forests of Transylvania are one of the oldest untouched regions in Europe. The legend of Count Dracula was born here. And if that's not enough, the whole place is just teeming with bears. My crew has spotted a clearing in the forest canopy. We have to be quick. The weather changes fast here and the pilot can't risk snagging the rope in the trees. As soon as I hit the ground, yeah. they're cutting me loose. Good luck, this means there's definitely bears in the wood. This is the sort of poo they do, big pile all in one. And you can actually see here what they've been eating. Little bits, the remains of fruit and apple. And yeah, got very fast for digestion. So it's gone basically pretty well straight through them. But you know, if you had nothing else to eat out here, in the extreme, you could actually eat this. You know, all you need to do, give it a bit of a rinse with some water. And yeah, it's not gonna get, it's not gonna be 100, 100, 100%. But if you had nothing else, a bit of a rinse down, And that basically is going to be okay to eat. Pretty sharp. A bit like somebody's got your apple core and smeared it in a dog poop. <laughs> but could save your life. Okay, it means we need to keep an eye out here. There are definitely bears, other bears in this wood. Trout tickling is one of those almost mythical things you often hear people talk about. And I've been showing loads of different ways to do it over the years. But in my experience, those people always have a good excuse of why it's not working that day. Someone once said to me, it's like trying to woo the girl of your dreams. It requires a gentle hand and a lot of patience. Well, it worked for me. Here you go. Come in, come in. There's one right under this. Okay, I've got his tummy. I feel it. Just press him up against the roof of this. Okay, I've got him, don't get out of my hand. There we go. And he's not a whopper, but he will do in his food. Straight out the stream, you can eat him. Ooh, fresh, like this, just take his head off. and then get the guts out. And if there's gonna be parasites, that's where most of those will be. Give it a rinse. And then really, the rest of that is good to eat. Chewy, sushi, 
and delicious. To get down there, I'm parachuting into the high mountains. But landing at such high altitudes means the air is thin, so I'll fall much faster than normal. And to reduce my risk of injury, I'm going to try and land in water. I can see some high alpine lakes down there, and that's what I'm aiming for. I've landed in one of these small lakes. The water is cold, just a few degrees above freezing. At this height, that was one of the fastest landings I've ever had. And I know the danger of doing these water jumps, and it's only the second one I've ever done. By the time I spot the rapids, I've no chance of escaping the currents. They're sucking me now downstream. And the river is just slowly building up speed with every little turn. And I can see the rapids ahead here. And I just hope this thing stays together. These rapids appear endless. As soon as I'm through one, there's another, and then another, and they're gradually getting worse. I don't know how much longer I can hold on. I've been thrown off the raft, and the water is so fast I can't climb back on. It's freezing cold, and I've got to get out as quickly as possible. seems to be blowing me in the right direction here towards that island probably about two miles away but my main concern is just the currents out here whether they're going to let me reach the island or not It's about long distance swimming and the most efficient way is just to use side stroke and conserve my energy for the surf that's going to be surrounding these islands.
I've got something, look. Hey! Whoa! Wow, look at this, this say. This is actually a little surgeon fish. These are quite nasty little brutes. And you can see why. Look at these. Look, these are razor sharp all the way down here. That little knife like thing there. And another blade looking thing there. And these are so sharp. These can cut a vein easily if you picked it up wrong. And what I'm going to do is open it up. And you can see the spine of it actually here and what I want is to get the fluid out of that. Not much, but it's better than nothing. What I'm looking for is the stomach. And the stomach itself is in three parts. So it can separate the liquids from the solids. And the bit I want is called the rumen, where it keeps the fluids. There we go, and I'm through to the inners here. Look at that, that's amazing. It's like a reservoir, this room and water. And a nomad told me once how his uncle in the 1950s was lost in a sandstorm out here. And he actually ended up killing his camel to get at the rumen and all this fluid inside and that actually saved his life. If you don't find much water in the rumen, you might get some from the main part of the stomach where the food is digested. <laughs> God, a load of stench of camel digesting food straight out my nostrils. And here you go, look, if you bring camera over here, and look inside, you can see everything that's been eating. And that's just so partially digested. And the fluid in this, again, is drinkable. God, that must have hurt when it went down its throat. Drinkable, but truly disgusting. It's very, very precarious up here. Way higher than I thought. You see what they used to give pilots for flying over the jungle. They used to issue them extra rigging lines. Just in case they had to bail out and got stuck in the jungle canopy, they had a way to get down to the jungle floor. Mother Nature a little bit more. There are no branches lower down the tree that I've landed in, and the trunk is too thick to get a good grip around. But I could use that thick vine on the neighboring tree if I can just get to it. Some smaller vines linking the two trees could be my route across. The thing is, these vines look precarious, but actually, they're very, very strong. I'll make it down this cluster to the bigger trunk. Spreading my weight over several smaller vines should reduce the risk of a sudden break. These are holding. Just as well, a fall from this height could be fatal. Okay, onto this branch. It's a little bit more reassuring than all of these. Okay, look, you can see it's a nice big vine. Okay, let's get onto that. The vine is more of a fireman's pole than a rope, and I have to clear off the moss to get a grip. It's taking all my strength just to control my descent. Well, I do know that if this was raining, I'd never be able to do this. Just be too slippy. I've actually got quite a good grip on this. The only thing I'm failing, my arm muscles. Come on. 
This close to the ground, I can risk a faster slide before my arms give out completely. Long way down that. <sighs> Not an easy descent. Shows how strong those vines are though. <laughs> I'm in Borneo, tackling one of the toughest jungles in the world. Descending through a cave has brought me to a stream, but flanked by cliffs, this 40 foot waterfall blocks my route. Look, I've also got the clouds moving in. Need a workout somewhere down here. If it starts raining, any kind of descent is going to be 10 times more difficult. Let's try it that way. Steady. It's actually the root system, this, of an upside down tree. And look, that goes all the way down to the bottom, look. These trees could be my way down. I'm going to work my way through this root system first. They've been toppled by a recent landslide. It's the kind of thing that makes jungles so dynamic and so dangerous. Quite a good little alcove in here. A little bit precarious though. Look, look straight down this tree trunk. And that's what I'm trying to shin down. Let me just come around to you. They've only recently fallen, so the trunk should still be strong. You always need to be wary of trees that have been down for a while. Chances are they'll be rotten and could give way without warning. Okay, and he's strong in advice. Wrap right around this tree trunk. The waterfall's deafeningly loud, and the spray is making this trunk really slippery. Oh, a nodule in the tree went right over my nuts. I'm on the bottom. I walked once, once the top of the tree. Last few limbs worked quite well. Try and cut across behind the waterfall, get the bank on the other side. Could be easier going there. The route on the other bank might be easier, but getting there will be risky. That's what we want to be careful of. Dead fall. One of the most dangerous things in jungle rivers. Lots of dead wood just pounding down. We need to tuck in really close to the rock face. This close to the waterfall, speech is all but inaudible. It's easier just to use a gesture. Ooh, a lot of power in that. Okay. At least I've had a wash. Okay, let's keep heading down. <laughs> 